Allow me to greet you, my dear friends. Uh, we have a very important lesson to pursue today. And our lesson topic is death in a sinful world. I invite you to pray with me as we are about to explore this very critical lesson of the hour. Father God, we thank you so much for giving us this wonderful opportunity that we can interact and look into this very critical lesson in our lives, death in our world. Because death is reality, it is very paramount that we have a true knowledge and information about its inception and also its final eradication. Thank you so much for leading us by the power of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We are going through critical times where death seems to be reigning in all our realms of life. No one is exempted from this issue of death. It's all over our environment. Therefore, this lesson, uh, death in a sinful world, is so pertinent for our times like this. We are going to reflect uh, on how Adam and Eve fell into sin. And also, we are going to see uh, how death and sin took over the world, how it all came about. And more so, it is exciting to explore how God planted hope in human beings. So therefore, this lesson is very critical uh, and so pronounced in our present today situations. Now, if we go through the Bible, we find that um, Adam and Eve were set to dwell in the Garden of Eden and live eternally. They were not subject to death, but the serpent as an agent of the devil visited the Garden of Eden with some certain statements which we can say they were statements of tension, which brought tension into the lives of our first human beings, Adam and Eve, but more specifically to Eve. The devil, through the serpent, the Bible tells us, uh, that he lured Eve to an argument. And this argument, it was about what God had said. In fact, he started by generalizing what God had specifically pointed out. The Bible says, um, the devil says, is it true that God said you may not eat all these trees in this beautiful garden? That was a general statement. Yet God specifically had pointed Adam and Eve to a certain tree which he said specifically they should not eat. So therefore, we find uh, here Eve being invited or even lured to this argument. And she made a decision out of that. Um, you may say, why did Eve uh, get into this deception? 
You may argue and downplay her decision, but allow me to explore with you these two logical uh, reasons, you know. Before that, there was no evidence for death and sin. So she quickly entered into that argument with a sense of curiosity. But what exactly is happening here? And number two, the, 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 the devil was eating the, the, the tree and he seems to be enjoying and he was not dying. So Eve, out of excitement, out of deception, also listened and entered in this deceptive allurement. That's why we find here being entertained or entertaining the devil, the two entertaining each other. But allow me to say, uh, in the context of our lesson, she forgot these three basic principles. Allow me to state them clearly. Number one is that human reason is not always the safe way to evaluate spiritual matters. We learn from our lesson that let's be careful. One thing which is important, which I want you to underscore in this lesson, is that never allow human reason to be the safest way of explaining spiritual matters. Number two, if for God, that the word of God can appear to be logical and senseless to us, but it is always right and trustworthy. God had said something, but Eve was entering into some human reasoning which some of us often fall prey to. In most cases, we downplay the word of God and center and benchmark on human reason and things fall apart. Number three, allow me to say another basic principle which if possible for God was this one. There are things that are not wrong or evil on themselves. But God has chosen them as a test of obedience. Understand that. I want to underscore that is these three basic principles of life which we must derive from this lesson as we move on. Therefore, we further find that as Genesis 3 expounds, especially on the psychology of temptation, we find that the devil won Eve's obedience. He won her mind, you see. And therefore, we find the devil through this the serpent accusing God for suppressing essential knowledge. In life, there are certain people who say the Bible suppresses human thought and human reason. It's not new. That's what the devil accused God of through Eve. During that discourse, he was accusing Eve. And let's be very, very careful also in our days that the same devil can say God's word is suppressive. So the devil says, God knows that the day you eat, you shall be wise. So he is depriving you of what you must know and enjoy. 
Some people are sidetracked from the true pathway and knowledge of God on the pretext that they are venturing into wisdom. They are exploring life in its fullest. Yet in actuality, they are entering into a serious dilemma. So therefore, Eve here had to decide whether to remain faithful to God or to embrace the devil's seductive allurements. I want us to understand here the psychology of the devil's temptation in its triune setup. Number one, the devil here uses a dietary perspective. Now, Eve saw that the tree was good to eat. You see, some temptations can come via dietary uh, pathways. Be very aware. And number two, the temptation was aesthetic, meaning that the tree was delightful to the eyes. Hmm? How many things have appeared delightful to you? How many? And I want you to learn a lesson from the three dimensions of Eve's temptation. And there you'll find the psychology of temptation. Even in our times. Dimension number three was that of logical analysis, implying that Eve considered the tree desirable to make one wise, according to her own logical analysis. So friends, we may argue that all forms of knowledge are valid as long as uh, we retain that which is good in quotes. First Thessalonians 5 verse 21. But this tragic experience of Adam and Eve demonstrates that knowledge itself may be detrimental. There are some things that indeed we are better off not knowing. That's very paramount. We get this from this lesson, from this experience of Adam and Eve. And if we go on through the book of Genesis, you will discover that this lie has perpetuated the teaching of the immortality of the soul. You study the Egyptian teachings of, uh, of memorism. You also study the Greek philosophies of Plato and Socrates. Underlying all these teachings is this basic teaching which originated from Eden, from the devil, that the soul is immortal. And that is contrary to biblical teachings. When God says, the soul that sins, because all have sinned, and they fall short of God's glory, are subject to death, every soul is mortal. There is no soul which is immortal. So, underlying all these modern teachings, even up to today, where we have got the post material uh, bodies, uh, they are based on the teachings of the devil. May I say that this decision of Adam and Eve has brought serious and tremendous consequences to the human race. 
Biological consequences, we find them uh, even in, 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 in birth pains. Social consequences, there are breakages all over. Ecological consequences, even we find this even in economic consequences. Sin has brought tragic disaster in humanity. Never downplay the effects of sin because sin brought death. Not only human beings, even trees are dying. When you see a leaf dropping down, that's a symbol of death. Death is a reality. All life is affected by death. So, death brought tragic consequences. The Bible in Genesis 3, verses 7 to 19, you can explore at length these consequences. But however, God did not leave human beings there with a hopeless uh, uh, case scenario. God, in his love, because he created, we learned that he created us with love. The very act of creation, we learned that it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a product of love. And also, our free will choice is, is the basis of love. So, God of love did not leave humanity stranded, hopeless on this issue of death. This is the most exciting thing. Uh, in, in, in Genesis chapter uh, 3, verse 15, uh, what theologians call the proto-evangelion, that is the first good news which is given to humanity. God communicating hope to humanity, experiencing, suffocating from all these serious consequences. I've just briefly outlined God says, I will put an enmity. God there was cursing the devil. He was cursing the originator of sin, the originator of death. The devil was not left free. God pronounced a curse. And this curse was pronounced when God said, I will put an enmity between you and the woman, and your seed, and his seed. That is in Genesis 3.15. Now, this word, enmity, um, in Hebrew, uh, where it originates from, is translated from the word Eba. Eba has a meaning. In, 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 in a nutshell, what this enmity means, God was actually saying, this human being who is now a slave of sin cannot remain like that without help. Through God's grace, God said, human beings, I'm, I'm putting, sort of, let me put it like this way, I'm putting a certain chip, chip in human beings which will cause them one or the other, to hate doing evil, to hate sin. That enmity planted by God in us it helps us in a way that when we have been involved in sinful activities, one day it dawns in our minds that for how long will I continue sinning against my God. For how long? It brings a sense to a senseless human being. It is the one which propels the, 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 the desire to repent and do good. So we want to thank God because he did not leave it at that stage, but God went further 
and put and planted within us that element that no, uh, uh, you're certain we cannot perpetually listen to you. We, there's a point where I can decide not to listen to you. Let me listen and obey my Father. So we thank God for that element of enmity which helps you, which helps us to know that there is a potential for us to return to God's Iran's, to be godly. You see, that's why, that, that, that's what makes, makes it possible that when the, the, the good news is being preached, when the cross is being elevated, there is that human desire to, 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 to decide to, 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 to follow Jesus because he is the only hope of salvation to a hopeless human race. Now, as they left the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve knew that they were going to die. But God did not allow them to leave the garden uh, 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 naked. He clothed them. Having learned this lesson, having learned the tragic consequence of sin, and themselves having experienced what it is to take life, to kill an innocent animal as a means of offering, as they were, as they were uh, witnessing blood oozing and being drained by, this, by the soil, as, as being drained by the earth, they knew that one day, the one, the innocent one, their beloved savior, their redeemer, one of the days will, is going to die for them, is going to die for the human race as the only hope for humanity in this issue of sin and death. And I want to say to us, uh, as I end, that in this issue of death, there is no need for us to fear death. Death is not something you can fear. The underlying uh, 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 lesson you may learn uh, here is that as you are faced with death, as we have lost friends and relatives, your beloved ones, that is not the end. That's not the end. Our lesson teaches us that Jesus has the keys of death and the place of death. So, I am helped to have hope in this hopeless generation, and my hope is nowhere else except in Jesus. I want to conclude this lesson by making a prayer, praying for us so that the Holy Spirit may expound on us on this issue of death. Loving Father, we want to thank you for explicitly outlining to us through this lesson on the issue of death, how it evaded our perfect environment, this world, and your intention of eventually eradicating death. That is our hope for the future. As we await that momentous event, we want to thank you because presently we can live with the hope of Jesus as our Redeemer and Savior. Thank you so much for the wonderful uh, scripture uh, texts which edify our understanding in this issue of sin and death. We pray and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.